hello friends in this video we will learn about risers and their design aspects so uh, let us start with this explanation suppose if i pour some molten metal in a mold cavity then after solidification this metal will start to shrink this is a characteristic property of all metals so if we pour molten metal in the gating system it will fill the entire mold but soon during and after solidification the uh, cast metal in the mold will try to will start to shrink the percentage of shrinkage depends on the material's coefficient of thermal contraction. Actually, when metals cool down, the kinetic energy of molecules decrease and they come closer to each other resulting in shrinkage. Okay, so now risers are introduced to supply additional molten metal during the shrinkage. This is a riser. Let us now uh, see how it works when you pour the molten metal first it fills the mold cavity through the gating system. Once the mold cavity gets filled up, the riser gets uh, filled up with the molten metal. This animation will help you understand, uh, help you to understand this more clearly. So risers compensate for shrinkage by supplying extra molten metal in the mold cavity. And to do this, we have to ensure that the riser is the last component of the gating system to get filled with the molten metal. So before going in details, let us try to understand the mechanism of shrinkage in details. Metals usually shrink in three stages. First, after pouring, followed by shrinkage during um, uh, this uh, the phase change. And finally, while uh, cooling from the freezing temperature to the room temperature. So risers um, are of two types, blind risers and open risers. A blind riser is a riser which does not have uh, an outlet to the atmosphere whereas an open open riser is one which has one of its end open to the atmosphere again based on their location with respect to the mold cavity risers can be side risers or top risers a side riser remains uh, in uh, one of the side of the cavity while the top riser stays over the cavity like this open risers are more advantageous because they provide two important functions First, they serve as ventilation and secondly, the foundry man can get an idea whether the cavity has been filled uh, by looking at the uh, level of the molten metal in the riser. So this was all about risers. Now let us try, uh, learn a few facts on how to design uh, such risers. Okay. So for this, there are many models available, but in this lecture, we will discuss two of the most important ones. The first is the Shinov's rule. Um, and then we will discuss the Keynes method. Okay, so the Shinov's model says that uh, the time required for a vol uh, volume of molten metal to solidify is directly proportional to the volume and inversely proportional to the surface area through which heat transfer is taking place. Here V is the volume of the molten metal and A is the surface area through which heat flows out. Here volume of uh, casting refers to this casting and volume of riser refers to this entire volume of the riser okay so and uh, the surface area of the mold refers to all these areas through which heat will flow out from the casting and in case of riser okay so uh, in case of riser there are three areas uh, these three areas are the surface areas now always remember that uh, risers should be the last part in the entire gating system to get solidified because if they uh, solidify before the actual casting they cannot supply required molten metal to compensate for the shrinkage so heat transfer from the risers should be lowest and to reduce the heat transfer rate surface area should be minimum so uh, volume per unit area of a riser should be higher than the casting Inversely, I can write that the surface area uh, by volume of the riser should be minimum. Okay. Now, for a given volume, the surface area we know that it is minimum for a sphere. But since it is not possible to uh, make a uh, sphere, uh, spherical uh, riser, so um, the next feasible design is the cylinder. So uh, we usually uh, usually go for the cylindrical design. Uh, cylindrical shape while while designing the actual risers next in the Keynes rule we have two ratios the volume ratio which is the ratio between the volume of the riser to the volume of the casting and the freezing ratio which is nothing but the ratio between the surface area to volume of a casting to the surface area uh, by volume of a riser 
so Kane observed that when we when a plot is made between these two ratios we get a curve something like that like this if for a uh, particular casting and riser volume and surface area if these two ratios coincides above the curve then the casting will be very good however if the two values coincide some, uh, somewhere be, uh, below the curve the changes uh, the chances of, the, of getting a good casting are very less usually if we choose higher values of x and y we get good quality castings now one limitation of this approach is that it cannot predict the size of the riser which which will give you the actual uh, which will give you very good casting so kane developed an empirical relation which relates x with y and three other constants a b c these constants were uh, discovered uh, exper experimentally for different metals finally one last thing uh, let us uh, do a, a comparative analysis between the top and the side riser for the same volume the top riser will release heat from three sides the bottom surface will not take part uh, in heat transfer since uh, since it is connected to the molten metal okay on the other hand the uh, side riser will release heat from all the four sides as shown so the surface area uh, of uh, the top risers are usually less th than the si side risers and we know that risers should have minimum surface area uh, of heat transfer so from solidification point of view side risers will solidify much earlier than the top risers for the same volume so this was all about the risers and their design aspects. For more such videos, please subscribe Magvidya. Thank you.